Welcome to the Agents of the Roundtable Wiki Community AMA. Every Monday at 7 p.m. UTC, we discuss Secret Network and its applications with guests from all around the network. This is an audio recording of the AMA. We hope you enjoy. Well, welcome everybody. Um, and welcome to you, Asaf. Thanks for, thanks for coming in. We were planning to have both Reuven and Tom on, but uh, a lot of things happened. So I think uh, Tom is in the end is in Asia and Reuven had some other things to attend to. So Asaf what? was... Uh... <laughs> Reuven ragged me? Oh my God. Yeah, yeah. Tom is in Thailand, so it's probably like 1 a.m. for him right now. Ah, okay, yeah. So Asaf was uh, so, luckily enough uh, willing to join. So uh, maybe you can introduce yourself a little bit, uh, who you are, what you do for the network or where you work. I guess most people are familiar, but still. Yeah, hi, so I'm Asaf Morami. I'm a software developer at Secret Labs. I uh, originally joined Enigma back in uh, 2019, um, which later rebranded to Secret Labs. Um, I'm 31 years old, married with uh, one kid. <laughs> um, what else? I live in Israel, so I was like six years in the military doing cyber security work. Uh, I was actually with Itzik and Tom in the same unit. Um, yeah, and that's it, <laughs> I think. Yeah, that's interesting, actually. That, that's how you guys met, or you knew each other already uh, before you joined the military together? So we met in the military, um, and then when I joined Enigma, Secret Labs, it was uh, through Itzik. So he was working at another company, but he knew Guy, and he connected us. So, and then I brought uh, Tom, but we all knew each other. And then like a few months later, uh, COVID hit and the company that uh, Itzik was working with uh, like went under, so <laughs> Itzik joined us. It was a, the company was working with like a really early stage startup with no funding, so, so COVID really did a number on them. And that's it. And now we also recruited another developer, which was She's a very good friend of mine, and he was he, he was also in the. Yeah, so it's uh, in the end, it's a sort of word of mouth recruiting at Secret Labs, but uh, it's never a bad thing to recruit more people who know a lot about cybersecurity. So uh, I guess yeah. it's the right pool to grab talent from. Yeah, so it's really hard to interview people you don't know. Like it's a long process and there are a lot of unknown unknowns and it's hard. So bringing people you, you already know and know their experience and their like professional level, it's far easier, I think. Yeah, I get that. And uh, probably the developer tool, uh, pool in Israel is uh, quite scarce in comparison to other uh, major hubs of development, possibly. Maybe, like, I don't know. <laughs> oh, it's uh, nice to know that the team is so close. Uh, now I get why you guys are developing so quickly and everything is moving so fast. Uh, that's in question. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was uh, hoping for IBC smart contract compatibility somewhere later, at, uh, almost at the end of the year. And I got, we, I guess we got a date a little bit earlier. So in that sense, uh, I'm positive. <laughs> like, as you see, the, the last couple of chain upgrades were delayed. <laughs> uh, it happens. I think uh, Ethereum merge is already delayed for two years. So in that sense, uh, we still have some more time to take. 
Yeah, but uh, <laughs> okay, I'll give you. <laughs> I'm giving you some slack here. No, um, yeah, maybe if we're talking about updates anyway, uh, I guess some people were interested about it is that uh, there was an update coming uh, in three weeks or two and a half weeks, maybe. And yeah. uh, it will, it's called Shockwave Alpha. And uh, maybe you could elaborate a little bit on what it contains. Yeah, so there's an upgrade on May 11th. And it contains mostly uh, performance improvements for key use cases that uh, secret contracts. Uh, that some teams really need in order to develop on secret network. Um, for example, uh, the recent Shade airdrop, they did a lot of uh, cryptographic computations inside the uh, airdrop contract in order to to implement a cross chain airdrop to ver to to cross reference like Terra with Cosmos and secret network uh, addresses. So these computations are really heavy, and it made blocks, uh, block times uh, be uh, higher, and and the whole chain like <laughs> it was a bad experience because nothing is built to to handle long timeouts. Like Kepler showed a lot of errors, and other apps like they didn't handle long timeouts because blocks were uh, taking um, longer than usual to, to commit on-chain. Um, another example is Shinobi, uh, which are a Japanese group that they are building um, a permissionless uh, Bitcoin bridge. So they built a smart contract that, uh, that verifies blocks on Bitcoin and secret network. So it's also a lot of cryptographic computations that are heavy. And when, when they ran like a test for, for, I think, one or two weeks, it was the same result like the shade airdrop. Like blocks were taking a lot more time to commit to chain. Uh, and service was degraded to a lot of apps on the network and Kepler included. And it was just a bad look. And we got a lot of feedback that, that an API like this is needed. So uh, the upgrade is uh, is going to add an API for like um, major cryptographic computations that are needed uh, in secret contracts. Uh, so the API will implement the the that functionality outside of secret contracts is going to be a lot faster. 600x faster from benchmarking. Um, we, we also added uh, in the upgrade, uh, we bumped uh, Cosmos SDK version, uh, which gave us like cool features for node runners. Uh, it's a bit more niche, but uh, it's going to be easier to sync uh, to sync a new node uh, a new node faster, um, and to maybe recover from uh, errors faster. Yeah, it's a whole different toolkit. In the end, uh, all here to improve the scalability, both on the API front and on the chain congestion uh, front, in the sense that some transactions will take less gas or at least less computation power, making sure that uh, the nodes can actually handle it and therefore the chain won't go down. So uh, I guess that's a good look uh, in the end for the entire network uh, to see the, the new utility come in. Is this also the upgrade that brings multi-threading for the APYs, or was it already released? So no, multi-threading is not possible inside transactions uh, because transactions need to be deterministic. Yeah, I meant queries specifically. Yeah, yeah. That's already out. Yeah, it's already out. 
yeah so uh an uh, an array of different upgrades i guess coming and then uh, after the may 11th upgrade there will be a new one coming somewhere in uh, well i don't know if the date's released i guess but uh, somewhere later this year uh, potentially yeah. yeah it's harder to tell right now uh, we hit a bit of a snag with the upgrade uh, code like last week we tried to do the shockwave alpha upgrade on testnet um, and it wasn't it was successful at the end but we we found a few bugs in the upgrade code like not in the new api in the new features but in the code that is making the upgrade uh, it's hard to explain but there's a module that makes upgrade between like to upgrade a chain it migrates a state if needed <laughs> like i'm explaining it really bad no it's um, it's where it's it's the same module which is for example implemented for people who are familiar with it on juno for example where a governance can say hey an update is happening they upload a certain file then when the vote is pressed the chain is halted at a certain block height and then the chain is updated instead of it needing to fork to actually update the network yeah exactly so it should be a lot a lot smoother from now on but uh, the initial code that we implemented it had like a very small annoying bug so we decided to postpone the up the upgrade by two weeks and do a lot more testing um, so that's why it's harder for me to to give a, a time estimate for shockwave beta right now but i know a lot a lot more like in two three weeks i think yeah and are you personally developing for a shock, a sheet show for shockwave beta or is that only a small part of the team uh, how is that normally like determined? Is everybody working on the same update or? I'm sorry, can, can you repeat the question? Are you working on the secret network beta upgrade yourself? So are you developing certain features for it or is only a small part of the team working on it? Yeah, yeah, I'm working on it. And we're also, we have a new dev that is finishing training and he's going to join me. The, the the one I was I mentioned before that we in the army and I, and he's a good friend of mine and hopefully Ruben will be also available to work with us on that. Um, it's a pretty big upgrade compared to Shockwave Alpha, Shockwave Delta, but um, I think most of the hard code is implemented, the hard parts inside uh, SGX, inside the enclave. And now it just, um, it's just a matter of wrapping it up nicely and uh, migrating the Cosm Wasm V1 API to Secret Network. Uh, we have a few modifications to make uh, that are needed because, because of our encryption and privacy. Um, so I lost my train of thought. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's always a, a, a certain amount of developers working on a specific update, I guess. Uh, for example, Guy and uh, Jonathan or Tom might be more. Uh, you or Jonathan is actually developing, but some of them might be more involved with uh, some projects you are uh, creating, like Legend DAO, and some others are mostly working on the. Um, development work for the layer one, I imagine, or is that, uh, or is everybody doing everything? It's mostly everybody doing everything, uh, but mostly it's is doing everything. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. So we, we have to thank Itzik for everything that's being created or? Yeah. Okay. Like yeah, I yeah, we also need more Itzik. So like, go ahead. <laughs> I uh, said so then we also need more moon tweets by Itzik instead of only by herself. Yeah, it's mostly Itzik's work and I'm taking the credit for it. <laughs> now we all know, you heard it here first. Yeah. <laughs>
No, and uh, so the new uh, upgrade for anyone who doesn't uh, know the upgrade coming later this year is bringing IBC smart contract compatibility. Uh, so the, the coming upgrade already brings some functionality of interchain accounts, which is a module recently implemented by the Tendermint uh, team. But uh, later this year, Cosm was in version one. So the most recent version, or at least one of the most recent versions is coming to Secret Network, making it easier for developers to yeah, create more or do more app development in an easier format or in the same format as on other chains on Secret Network. And then also the IBC smart contract compatibility is coming, meaning that it would be able for other chains or for Secret Network to query or do transactions on different chains. So for example, people from Juno would be able to run a smart contract on Secret Network from within Juno Swap. Uh, and this creates, of course, a whole new array of possibilities where you would be able to land on Sienna while using Osmosis, or you would be able to, uh, I don't know, liquidate your positions on Yumi because uh, on uh, Silk has gone down 1% in back or stuff like that. Um, so I'm uh, very interested to see this uh, come. And then, uh... Yeah, for me, the most I think important feature of that's gonna come with the shockwave beta is that uh, current SNP20 tokens will be able to 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 move to not to move but to transfer tokens to osmosis for example and to tap the the liquidity there. Like I think that this is something that we owe to the projects that are building on Secret Network. Yeah, it's good yes. that you mentioned that I, uh, I completely went into deep uh, regarding IBC smart contract compatibility, but more importantly, it also brings IBC SNP20 compatibility, of course. And then uh, a question which resolved around this from some people uh, I met who put in some questions over the past <coughs> few days uh, to Secret Labs were questioning how does the IBC smart contract compatibility come into play with the recent dimension uh, announcements. So I don't know if you know anything about the dimension rollup and what you guys are planning to do, but maybe you could elaborate a little bit on what the plan is for using this uh, specific technique on Secret Network. Yeah, I, I have no idea. I think it's still fresh and <laughs> I don't know what's going on there. <laughs> okay, so it's still a very new announcement, only uh, some people are really into it and uh, getting all the details, I guess, on how it could potentially work out. Yeah. Yeah, then um, there recently there has been some discussions on uh, on Twitter and also uh, people in the community asking about SGX and some bugs that were found recently. And uh, we never know exactly what that uh, intends for the specific use case we are doing, but maybe more generally, um, uh, how are you guys working with SGX currently? And is there any plans from Secret Labs or any not specific plans, but are you looking to, are you interested basically in any other ways to achieve uh, computational privacy on blockchains? And have you seen anything, uh, any interesting developments in the past uh, years on this regard? So, yeah. Um, so first of all, with regarding to SGX bugs, usually they fail to Intel and we heard nothing from them so far uh, but from what it looks it's it's gonna be just like a, a bios upgrade or something like that so i wouldn't worry uh, this early um, and yeah we are looking into other uh, options too i think the the thing that a uh, guy and me are, are most excited about is uh, fully homomorphic encryption, which is a completely cryptographic software solution. So no hardware need. So no like specialized hardware needed. Uh, the problem with it right now is <laughs> that it's super slow like a billion times, like gazillion times slower than running on SGX. 
So it's not going to be usable like to run core and secret contracts. Like doing an addition one plus one, it takes like a few seconds. <laughs> so. Yeah, so you quickly get very high uh, computational loads on all the nodes if you want to do this over a decentralized network for significantly difficult transactions. Yeah, <laughs> even a, a fairly basic transaction. Yeah, so uh, it's, uh, it's still something in the works. And I guess other people would be interested to see if you work are working with zero knowledge proofs in any way. Uh, I've not seen any comments on uh, by Secret Labs on this, but maybe it's something you're interested in or you're researching. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure that zero knowledge proofs are a good way to go. Like, it's more of a trusted solution. Like, someone needs to know. Someone needs to compute over your data, and then you trust that someone that. They are not going to publish that data, I think. Um, but yeah, regarding fully homomorphic encryption, like our people we are talking to, they are saying that they're expecting performance to get much better within like three or four years. So we're keeping tabs on it for now. Yeah, three to four years might sound like a long time, but... Uh... When developing something like this, I think it's a reasonable amount of time set out to achieve, uh, I guess, a faster computation speed or a lot more possibilities at least. What about like AMD's technologies? I guess you're referring to the uh, TE instance that AMD offers, whether it will be supported by Secret Network or not. Yeah, I yeah, don't I know. Know how, yeah, something like that, and how it's like compared to security and like bugs to like intels i don't remember specifics like the research that we did back in uh, 2019 and 2020 it showed that uh, it's far more buggy than and less secure than sgx like i don't know what's the state right now with i think it's called amd sev like I don't know right now, but I think we, we have our eyes set on software solution rather than migrating to another uh, hardware solution like AMD or uh, AWS Nitro. Yeah, I think a guy mentioned in the Epicenter podcast like two months back um, that there was a decision made between uh, AMD and Intel, I guess. And in that time, it was the best choice to just go with Intel and seem to still be the correct choice. And that in the long run, if it would be needed, it would be possible to potentially support both AMD and Intel at the same time to decentralize this hardware limit a little bit. But in the end, uh, the main focus was on a fully encrypted software solution where there is no uh, hardware trust, I guess, uh, related to the network. That's the dream, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I guess some networks are stating that they realize this and i um, happy to see this either evolve into a full truth or uh, see if they at least uh, created something where what, which other networks could leverage. But for now, uh, we're happy to be uh, privately on mainnet. I guess another question regarding the encryption or the software solution is that in 2015, or I think the paper was released in 16, the, the paper came out regarding multi-party computation for privacy on blockchain. And Enigma was of course called Enigma-MPC, standing for multi-party computation. I don't know how much you know about this yourself, but is there any way in the future you see multi-party computation or this specific paper come back to reality where this would be possible to use on a uh, yeah, on a blockchain providing computational privacy. Yeah, so so for computational privacy, I don't know because it's really, really, it provides really bad performance and like much worse than fully homomorphic encryption right now. But we were looking into it for 
node registration process and for the bootstrapping process of a new network, but nothing too substantial at the moment. Yeah, so it's something that's still in the back of uh, back of your mind, of course, but for now it doesn't seem like the best uh, uh, solution to have uh, fully encrypted uh, computations on the network. Yeah, I think it, it's, it can provide a good solution to, to rotate keys. Um, we also were talking about how to rotate keys and re-encrypt re the entire state. Like that's something that we, we would want to do some, sometime in the near future. Uh, just to make sure that if there were bugs in older code, uh, um, malicious uh, attackers wouldn't be able to, to decrypt the current state on the chain with old code with bugs, for example. Yeah. Uh, so, so yeah, for, for that, I think um, MPC might be a good solution. Yeah, that's actually a very interesting use case in the sense that you secure some part of your uh, externality risk, I guess, by regenerating the encryption keys. And would this process only be able to be done for the entire network or would in some future, um, uh, any single wallet would be able to potentially regenerate their own uh, cryptic key? So it's not about wallets. Um... There are encryption keys that are shared um, inside the every node, like between all the nodes in the network. Um, and they are used to encrypt the state of uh, contracts. Um, and also to encrypt and decrypt uh, user inputs and outputs. So user, users also have encryption keys, but they are also, they are only for inputs and outputs and i think that that's not something that we need to to re-encrypt and these keys that are used by the validator nodes to i guess decrypt the state or not decrypt but within the te i guess to use it yeah how were these keys once generated were they generated when the protocol got bootstrapped or how do, how did that work yeah, there was a bootstrap node back in uh, September of 2020. Um, it, it generated like a random number, side SGX. It was the first node on the network, so so there was no need for consensus. And then it generated a, a random number and derived all the keys from there. Um, and then once like a few nodes uh, joined back, joined to the network, like rejoined the network, we just deleted the, the bootstrap node machine. So it won't be able to, so no one would be able to recover the, the ra randomness that was generated there, even though it's inside SGX and, and was not accessible to us as well. Like, yeah, so it's a fully, uh, nobody knows what uh, encryption keys are to the secret network state. Yeah, that's the yeah, simple, uh, that's simple the summary. That's the compromise that we could come up with. Yeah, no, it's we interesting for, for people who are joining right now to realize how that may have happened like almost two years ago now. Yeah. Uh, because that's how long the protocol has been running already. Yeah, yeah. so... Um, Maybe moving a little bit away from the encryption in the which are which <laughs> you guys are looking at or which is possible in the future. Uh, some people are also uh, uh, interested in scalability, and I guess we we touched on that a little bit already with um, the upcoming scalability upgrade for the verification uh, API and also the multi-threading, which is already launched for the query nodes, which is of course different from the chain. But uh, yeah, maybe. If, if you have to look at secret network in, in one or in two years or maybe in three, um, do you think um, uh, a lot more scalability is, uh, can, can be reached by uh, either improving the hardware validators are running on or improvements you see already coming down the line or which 
projects already working on uh, besides just uh, implementing a, a roll-up or something like that. Yeah, so I think not, uh, I think we have a long way to go with software before we go with hardware solutions. Um, back in 2020, when we implemented uh, secret contracts, we worked with the Cosmosm team, uh, and they uh, implemented Cosmosm with a Wasm engine that that's called Wasmer. Uh, and back then in 2020, it was not compatible with FGX, so we couldn't use it, and we we had to go with a a simpler and slow, far, far slower uh, Wasm engine that's called Wasmi. Uh, and that's what's still uh, being used today in Secret Network. Uh, like we had to rewrite the entire Cosm Wasm internals to, to make it work, <laughs> essentially. Um, but since then, uh, the Wasm engine that Cosm Wasm are using, like and Juno and Terra are using, for example, it went a full rewrite. And I think that I want to try, try like in the next couple of months to to try to replace our slow engine with the faster one. Um, and then we should be able to get to performance that is maybe close to Terra and Juno. So that would be similar to like a, a four to five uh, X I guess, difference in gas usage or computational effort by any node. Uh, yeah, it's mostly, yeah, it's mostly like running time. But it should be more closer to 200x rather than 4x. Okay, okay. Yeah. So instead of fitting, I guess, uh, 20 transactions in a block with uh, 6 million or 10 million gas, we would be able to fit 200, uh, to, sorry, 2000. Hopefully, yeah. Okay, so uh, no rollups needed for scalability, I guess, in the, in the meanwhile. And yeah. then you said uh, software is, of course, more important in the short term, and it's also good to always focus on having the best software for the hardware you can run to make sure that decentralization stays intact. I mean, if validators have to run um, hardware, which is not... Uh, to a high level, I guess it's easier to have a little bit more of a decentralized network. Also, people not running a validator can then potentially run a full node. But if it ever comes to hardware scaling, uh, I think some people mentioned that STX is working on having a ROM or a, yeah, ROM, so memory outside of their uh, chip, which then could be able to use, or maybe potential multi-threading inside um, the four transactions inside the STX. Are those things? which may ever happen in the future, or you see the total scalability only coming from software? Yeah, so so in every blockchain, you can't really do... It's not easy to do multi, uh, multi-threading because transactions need to go in order um, and all nodes in, in the network need to reach consensus on the output of the transactions. So, so doing things in parallel is a bit harder because it's harder to determine given two transactions whether they are working, whether they are working with the same uh, state and mutating the same the same state, or whether they are independent and can run in parallel. Um, yeah, and also like I wanted to add. Uh, to the previous uh, answer that we have SGX. So the encryption stuff and running inside SGX is a bit slower than running on a regular CPU like Terra and Juno. Yeah, no, that's, of, yeah, of course, uh, that's one of the computational difficulties, I guess, when dealing with privacy, not only your, uh, not only because you encrypt and decrypt, uh, it may take a little bit longer, but also because something has to be tailored to be fit inside the SGX or be used inside the SGX is what I mean. Then it uh, may take a little bit more time. 
Uh, and I guess the memory is not really um, a bottleneck for now. So even if that would be released by STX, it's not significantly important. Yeah. Yeah, like contracts are using, they are limited to 12 megabytes of memory. Uh, for comparison, in Ethereum, it's like uh, 128 kilobytes of memory for contracts. So that's not a bottleneck right now. Okay, interesting. Interesting to know. And then in the as last question, I guess I would ask is uh, to you uh, more on what you'd like to do. But before I ask that, I would like to ask everyone in the who is here right now, if you have any questions, then think about them now or write them in the chat. And then we can ask some last questions uh, to us off after I uh, have an answer to this last one. And uh, oh yeah, we're just happy to answer your questions as well. So we for you, Asaf, I yeah. guess. Oh, sorry, mm -hmm. go ahead. I think we have the hour, so we can take like five minutes break and yeah. get quick if you want to. Yeah, of course. Um, can do I ask one last question and then uh, we can uh, do that? Yeah, yeah, sure. Go ahead. Yeah, so um, Melch uh, uh, asked this on Twitter and he was like, if you could work on any project or ID for a secret um, and you have money and personnel, whatever you want, time is not an issue, then what would you work on? Oh my God, I have no idea. Let's take five minutes. <laughs> okay, we're taking five minutes and then uh, Asaf will be back for a little bit to answer some of your questions. So I have one walk, yeah. Yeah. Okay, thank you. We'll take five minutes, guys. We'll see you at 20.45 for me, that is. So that's uh, 18.45 UTC. Really interesting questions there. Good job, Archibon. Really well organized AMA. I'm happy to be back. Yeah, the, the last AMA I was in, <laughs> like, there, there were no questions for me. And the host was like, <laughs> okay, so how are you? How's the weather? <laughs> 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 I, I wonder where you had this AMA. <laughs> it was a tender mint AMA, I think. Uh huh. And they didn't prepare any questions for like secret network related. Yeah, this happens. So, no, yes. uh, normally I ho I have I want to be here every uh, Monday, but sometimes I'm not here, so I wasn't here for a few weeks. Uh, so the AMAs went on, but uh, I was not sure exactly what was answered, but. Uh, I wanted to be ready for this one, so I had some things prepared. Yeah, thank you. You're, you're doing a good job. Like, honestly, I'm pissed at Ruven. He, he rugged me. <laughs> yeah, I spoke a lot to Ruven. He, he, he wanted to be here, but uh, he had something come up. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I, I, I realized again that I have to send calendar invites to people who are very busy instead of just relying on them remembering that they would come. Oven always has something. But I guess you wanted to take five minutes, right? Are you still taking a break or? Yeah, I'm thinking, <laughs> thinking of an answer. Okay, okay. I'll uh, be right back in uh, 30 minutes. Everyone in uh, who is in here, make sure to think of a question uh, you wanted to ask. If, uh, if you don't ask it now, you may not have an answer for the next, uh, I don't know, next AMA. In I, six months. Yeah, I, I put something on the chat. Yeah, I uh, ask it later. I, I already somehow asked about I mentioned that uh, Asaf seemed to be not really in the loop on this one. So, um, sure. Well, yeah, it might be better to ask this to Guy, uh, who is coming up uh, hopefully somewhere in the next month to talk about Legend DAO and Dimension. What uh, chat? It's the meetings chat where you just uh, tag to Reuven. Yeah. That, yeah, that's also going to be an interesting game. I want to hear about some legend out open dimension. Like, what's the what's happening? Yeah, I guess in the meantime, uh, does anyone have any recommendations for guests? 
we want to have Jekyll on again soon because they have been doing a lot of things. Uh, I also want to get Shade on again because a lot of things changed in the past uh, about three months. Maybe Ruven. <laughs> I'll ask him again. <laughs> ah, the, the question about the dimension partnership and open. So yeah, so open is dimension, I guess. Like I, I'm not in the loop <laughs> regarding this. It's all guy. Button right now, so I have no idea. Yeah, so I guess we we come back to the to the question I asked is that if you if you have unlimited time, money, personnel, you could work on any project or ID for secret. Then what would you work on? Like honestly, I don't know. Like two years ago, we had a. Uh... Hackathon before we released secret contracts and I built a uh, uh, Texas Hold'em poker for two players. Um, and it was really cool, I, if I might say. <laughs> um, because I think that um, Secret Network is the only place right now in blockchain where you can have games where you can build uh, games of incomplete uh, how do you say this? information like for example in card games like poker uh, you can have private hand and the deck is private so you don't know what the next card is um, on other chains it's not possible because it's all public uh, so everyone can see everyone's hands. Um, so I think I might want to take it a step further. The poker game, like extend it. Like I had an idea to maybe make it a table of six people, six players, um, with a much nicer uh, a UI and maybe add like Snip20 but um, because I think that right now like online poker is centralized so there's value in doing it decentralized on a blockchain also online poker they really have a problem with the settlement of payments because banks don't like online poker companies uh, so they re resort to using Bitcoin as a payment method, like to pay players that wanna uh, that wanna cash out. So they're just paying with Bitcoin. But I think that on Secret Network you can do this like immediate settlement when the game ends and you win the the pot, you get it. Like you don't need to. You don't need to transact with the poker company to get your Bitcoin. Yeah, that's uh, a very nice uh, addition, of course. And I guess then the, it would not would not be paid per pot, but you could also have tournaments and then everything would be in escrow until the tournament is uh, done or something like that. Yeah, but it's going to be in a contract. So, so once you win something, you get it immediately. Yeah, and for anyone who is uh, interested, uh, you can find this uh, application, by the way, on holdm, so holdem.enigma.go. Yeah. And there's currently a governance proposal. Yes, it is, but it's, uh, yeah, it's a bit complicated, this story, but yes, there's also, there's also yes. a governance there's proposal. So regarding... <laughs> It's for a different meeting set, but but yes, there is also a, a governance proposal live uh, for a poker poker game. Uh, <laughs> we'll see whether that gets voted in or not. But they actually want to build it. And uh, for anyone not in the know, if you would, for example, build a game on Ethereum, then the state of Ethereum is of course known. 
Um, so besides huge gas fees and non-instant finality, you also get issues where the person who has the best chain analysis company behind him would be the best at the game instead of the actual player. While on Secret Network, the state is not known and you have instant finality with a block time of six seconds. So every uh, six seconds, I guess the state would be verified again and another player can play a hand uh, while knowing that the other one was confirmed and verified. And uh, some games on Ethereum, for example, or on other blockchains use centralized servers to create an encrypted state, but that wouldn't be necessary and secret. Yeah, uh, I would I would play it, um, Asaf, your poker game. Are you a player yourself as well, or you just like developing it? No, I'm not much of a player. <laughs> so we leave that to Tor. Yeah, Tor and Itzik. Oh, Itzik as well. Okay, so I guess we can have a secret uh, secret poker event with Tor and Itzik battling it out against some uh, some known people. <laughs> and can we watch the event? Well, there recently was an event actually where Tor played against uh, what's this guy called? Anyone knows this? I mean, as long as he's not using the foundation money, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I, I saw him was here for 50 minutes. I don't want to hold, hold him any much longer. Uh, does any one of you here in the meeting still have a question uh, for Asaf? See, Pimuk is uh, typing. Oh, Phil Helmuth. Yes, that was the name. Thank you. Any new developer? I have a question. Right? Have a question. Okay, um, go ahead. So there was a poll on Twitter at some point, but nothing much came of it. It's about which we would like to see first, and I think what won was um the hide like i think somehow being able to hide the wallet address that interacts with a contract um is there any update on that or does anyone even want to work on that or is it like just infeasible it's in my wish list yeah <laughs> like no update but uh, I want to get to it at some point, like after we're done with IBC contracts and the replacing our WASM engine and then supporting the newer SGX uh, CPUs. <laughs> right, so right after that. Yeah. So in, in one and a half year? <laughs> Hopefully sooner, yeah. Okay, hopefully sooner. Okay, well, at least we have some timeline. It's confirmed it's sooner. No, but... June. <laughs> yeah. No, the um, the question I guess you by you said was that it's then for would so that would be for every contract interaction, right? So then would be able that to use as secret as gas. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, it would uh, basically eliminate the current anonymity set problems on Secret, which would be, uh, yeah, incredible, I guess. Uh, it's not, it doesn't seem infeasible. Even even just adding the ability to use a secret as gas, just that ability, if you just add that without, um, yeah, without like even hiding the address yet, that's still a big thing, I think. If you if you use that, then uh, your anonymity set becomes as large as every single transaction because if you use as secret to transfer to someone, then there are so many other transactions with as secret because everyone uses this as gas that your anonymity key, anonymity anonymity becomes a lot bigger. So very good for privacy. Fairly good privacy. And is okay. there anything like technically like making that difficult as half, like just being able to use as secret as gas? So I looked into this and I don't think that it's that difficult. Um, but it needs some engineering. Uh, because this makes a secret part of the chain. 
Uh, it's not sandboxed anymore. So, for example, uh, a new chain will also have a secret built into it. Because right now, when you are launching a chain, you have no contract. Uh, for example, when you are launching a new test, you have no contracts in instantiated. And if you want a secret, you need to, to create it there. So making a gut like making um, making it possible to pay gas with a secret, it's going to to need some engineering. Also in the ten and ten cost. So yeah, so it's a fairly complicated task, which uh, does like yeah, change the chain in comparison to the standard, I guess. But, yeah, it's a change to all level of the, all levels of the code, I think. The okay, entire I guess. So, yeah. so it's a bit complicated, but I don't know if it's too hard. And I guess the the legal complaint is uh, not on your side, but it would for sure also have some implications on how, well, secret is still auditable, but on how uh, nice other um, legal crypto companies think about this or whether or not they like this but uh, that's something for the future so yeah it's all odd auditable so i i don't see a problem just hand over your viewing keys and everyone can know what you did no just export your entire transaction history and report it to the taxman i guess at the end of the year Yep. I'll do your taxes. Okay, thanks for being here, Asaf. I wouldn't well will not help you any longer. Uh it's uh quite late at your place. So uh, uh I hope you you don't have a toddler strolling around somewhere in your house and it's all good. No, she she's asleep. Okay. <laughs> she's sleeping well, it seems. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much for being here and um yeah. Good week ahead, and uh, we'll meet again soon. Thank you. Yes. Hey, it's been fun. Thanks. Yeah, I thanks everybody will... for joining. Yeah, we will be here to share the fun. <laughs> Ruben will be here next time. We will upload the episode to uh, to YouTube quite soon, uh, so you can find the recording there. And uh, remember that we are here every Monday at... 6 UTC or 2 p.m. Eastern time or 8 o'clock in the night Central European time. So if you have nothing to do and you want to listen into some secret network AMAs with some people from in the network of the or the applications, then make sure to join on Monday. Thank you, guys. See you next time. Bye-bye. Merci à... Thank you for listening in on the Agents of the Roundtable Community AMA. Follow us on Twitter at secret underscore AOTRT and every Monday at 7 p.m. UTC in the Secret Network Discord.